Well, so one of the things that people do with this is build web servers, right? Mm. So you have hundreds of, so I don't know how many people are aware of Linux and open source and all that stuff. So let me take a step back. So there's, you know, and there's hundreds of different versions of Linux. So we call it distros. You go to distrowatch. Uh, uh, oh, is it org? Distrowatch.org or distrowatch.com? Saints.org. Dot org? Okay. And they have list hundreds of different versions of Linux that are available. So you can, you know, basically put together a cheap computer for three hundred dollars and throw software on it that will do you know a billion different things, right? This brings it down into the you know, less than fifty dollars you can basically run an entire you know system that does uh, web serving or programming or you know this is what got, got us a lot of a lot of us excited about this. So um, this particular software that's running on a lot of these systems is uh, written or modified version of that Linux for this this specific purpose. So uh, Wheezy uh, Raspberry um, is a specific operating system distribution of a specific version. So yeah, um, Raspbian is a full desktop. You can log into it, and you can you can have GUI. It's a GUI desktop, so you can bring up um, a text editor, and you you know, and there's a web browser. You know, it's everything that, for, oh, not everything that Debian does, but most of what Debian Linux has runs on um, the Raspberry Pi Raspbian image. And very easy to update. It's not like in the old days when you had Windows and you had to go buy a CD and load that up and run to a, a log on, you know, and then do all kinds of license keys and stuff. A lot of the software available could be just a simple command or there's like a, a software uh, uh, application that runs that you could you know, bring up and get, like if someone tells you the name of some particular type of software, you can go out there and search on it and find it usually, if it's you know, a popular one, and just click on the button to install it and it'll do everything and install it for you. So it's a you know, very flexible way of, of distributing the open source. The, the website recommend um, that you download news and then just kind of choose which one you want to install. Well, which one is the best one for purposes of saving space? Well, it, they're more of a single purpose kind of operating system. So it depends on what you want to do. Uh, so Noobs has, I don't know, five different operating systems on their one download. And it'll have the um, like an XBMC or home theater kind of stuff. And then it'll have the Raspbian, the uh, full Linux desktop set up. And then uh, a couple other ones. I don't know if it has RetroPie built into it too, or and something else. Uh, I, so, I didn't read it. Do it tell you what, what you would normally use each version for on it? I'm not sure. Uh, if you're on the website and you're reading through it, it will tell you. If you boot it, most likely it'll just give you the name of each one, like which one you want to run. So for noobs, there's the noobs thing. The, the one I used because it was the popular one at the time was the Raspberry, yeah. and the, the version of that was uh, Wheezy, I think it's called. And so that one, you know, a lot of the stuff is designed and written for. So one of the things is if you start using something and you want to make it work, you want to do something that's popular so that other people have done this and provide a documentation on what steps to take. Yeah. That really helps to have someone else having done it first and just showing. So that uh, Wi-Fi list that's going around, is there anybody else who needs that? Did we, did we get everybody who needs it? All right. Um, good. Um, so this is the other project I was working on. I have a 1981 motorcycle. And the gauges are all busted up because the previous owner had dropped it a few times. Um, so I wanted to get new gauges for it. And the speedometer itself was like four hundred dollars. I paid six hundred for the motorcycle. <laughs> so I can't really see doing that. And thought of the Raspberry Pi. I'm like, well, what if I set up a council for the motorcycle and hooked up all the electronics and the whole council up to Raspberry Pi? Um, so as far as I got was setting up a USB dongle to it, um, which can give me my speed within uh, one mile per hour which turns out uh, federal law requires, or state law requires that your speedometer be within plus or minus five miles an hour. Oh, really? Yeah. 
<laughs> so when the cop stops me and says I'm speeding, yeah, I'm not really you. speeding? <laughs> well, no, your speedometer could be off by up to five miles yeah. an hour in either direction. Yeah. So it might that's be your you fault. Need to over 75. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's cool. Right? Yeah, that's yeah. Yeah. Um, so the GPS dongle, uh, according to its specs, says it's accurate to within um, one foot per second, which is roughly a mile per hour. I was kind of surprised that the math worked out that close, but um, so then I found some Python scripts to help create all this stuff. What you're seeing here is the default information because it's not able to get a GPS signal through the ceiling, um, which is one downfall of this if I go through a bridge, or not through a bridge, uh, through a tunnel, I'm going to lose my signal and have some issues with it, but uh, the other thing I was hoping to do is hook up the uh, turn signals, the check engine light, and all that up to the GPIO pins, so I could have them show up here as well. Um, and then I got a <coughs> little camera, a little uh, monitor, that hooks up to the uh, video port on here, runs off 12 volt, so I can have the whole thing on here. And that display looks somewhat decent on here. Um, I got to figure out how to um, combine all that into a bigger thing, which I suck at Python scripting. So <laughs> that's been my biggest issue. Um, but the idea is to replace my entire console, turn signals, all of that with this, being able to rig this up underneath the bike and have it all run off the 12 volt battery on the bike. And also, apparently, you can pull out the SD card while it's running, <laughs> and it appears to keep running. <laughs> well, because it boots to the RAM, right? Is that how it works? Do you know where? Well, yeah, it has to boot the kernel into RAM. Yeah. So I guess it'll keep running until it has to read something that hasn't been cached yet. Yeah. Right. Any questions? Have you tried the odometer? Set that up? Um, no. Uh, is there a way? There's no way to make it accurate. Um, yeah. Okay, go ahead. Um, there's no way of doing it accurately, which for an odometer is the most important thing. Um, that That does cause an issue for doing this to my bike because once I mess with the odometer I can't legally sell it um, but it's from 1981 not really planning on selling it <laughs> figured I'll keep it until it rusts away in the yard and then give it to your son yes signal uh, I'm asking because I tried using GPS when my speedometer was malfunctioning mm -hmm. a while ago, and I couldn't. Uh, and I always got my information well after the fact. So I don't know what the lag time is. Um, I did take this whole setup um, in the car while my wife was driving, and it was right on to what she was doing. But she's not the type that guns it and goes from zero to sixty and two seconds in a minivan, so. Well, I will mention, and this is, you know, just something I've heard, or sort of a, um, take it for what it's worth, uh, that the guys that uh, are racing the Ford vehicles uh, before they're sold, you know, testing things out, they calibrate the speedometer using GPS. So it's got to be fairly accurate. Okay, but they're able to do that by getting up to a constant speed and leaving it there. Well, so uh, I do have an app on my cell phone that's available that is purports to be something that tells you exact information about 30-foot uh, time and stuff like that. So extremely <laughs> accurate information about your acceleration. Yeah. So I would suspect yeah. that means that it's a, you know, fairly Comparing quick. the readouts from this to the speedometer on my wife's car, it was right on. You know, as she accelerated, 
the car's speedometer went up, this went up at the same rate. So it seemed to be right there. Um, now, one issue I did have was this GPS unit actually cal calculates its speed within it. I wasn't able to calculate the speed myself because that would take too long and it had too much lag. So all that I'm doing is reading what the speed on this is directly and then printing that to the screen. Um, I believe I'm doing a little bit of math to convert it to miles per hour, but it's, I'm not having to actually do any trig on it to figure out what my speed is. I'm just pulling that from this. Um, same thing with the time and all that stuff. I'm sure it would be probably available on, you know, a Linux environment. This is Android. One and there are other apps like that. One thing about the uh, Raspberry Pi it seems like uh, a good <coughs> selling point if you made was portability. You can take that with you and use it anywhere, you know, like you go yeah. here, right? I was curious if, I'm sure there's probably someone out there that has possibly taken it so that the video can go to the smartphone. You know what I mean? You get it, or you can have your video for that Raspberry Pi go to your smartphone. Right? Actually, yeah. Um, again, I'm blanking on names. But he has his Raspberry Pi. What? Drew. Drew. I'm oh, sorry. Drew's Raspberry Pi is running. Uh, it's actually running up there right now. And his has uh, Raspbian, right? Yes. And he's running BNC. And then you get a BNC viewer on your phone. And then you can just BNC into the desktop. So you can kind of control and see yeah, it's available for anyone who wants to play around with it. And uh, relating to portability, so one of the things is power, right? So how do you get power to this thing? And I found these, this is a real cool little thing, Pocket Juice. It's called $10 at uh, Walmart. And you can get like a $30 one that has three times as much power at uh, uh, Micro Center. Micro Center is our favorite. You know, geek place, uh, the geek out there. It's like a candy store for geeks. And basically, this allows you to, you know, power up, uh, you know, like your cell phone and stuff like that. The, the Raspberry Pi will run on this. So, you know, you, you can make your own battery pack, right, by stringing a bunch of, you know, AA, AAA batteries together. But this has a real cheap.